Yeah, good morning, everyone. The paper, I'm, the paper I'm going to present today is Why I Like It, Multitask Learning for Recommendation and Explanation. My name is Chao Lu, and I'm from Layer 6 AI. This is a joint work with Ray Haidong and Barry Smith. So for a long time, recommender systems were about ratings and collaborative filtering. Later, people started to be more interested in content and metadata. And more recently, people turned their attention to the plentiful supply of user-generated reviews. Noisy even though they are, we have seen remarkable successes in recent years for applying user-generated reviews for recommendation. Today, we are going to focus on user-generated reviews as a primary source of recommendation data, but we are actually going to describe a more task learning method that combines matrix factorization for recommendation and sequence-to-sequence -sequence learning for explanation. While conventional approaches typically generate explanations and recommendations independently, the benefits of employing a mod task learning setting is twofold. Firstly, the sequence to sequence model is augmented by the user preferences and product features learned by the matrix factorization and thus can generate more personalized explanations. And secondly, jointly training matrix factorization and the sequence to sequence for explanation enforces the consistency between the generated explanation and the, the provided recommendation. So, so the joint training of the recommendation and explanation is achieved by enforcing the latent features learned by matrix factorization and the textual features learned by sequence to sequence learning to approximate each other. In the mod task learning framework, the user and item latent factor vectors learned by matrix factorization is regularized by the textual features learned by matrix factor by sequence to sequence learning. And, and um, in the mod task learning setting, the matrix factorization is a slight variant of the um, Problematic matrix factorization model in that the latent factor of users and items are uh, defined to be the prior distribution of the textual features learned by uh, the sequence to sequence model. While in the conventional um, PMF, the prior distribu distribution of the user and item latent factors are defined to be vectors of all zeros. So our sequence to sequence learning model can generate three types of ex explanations. For user-specific and item-specific explanations, we basically feed in the user and item-specific um, review documents and use the encoder to extract textual features from the review documents based on which the decoder generates reviews. These are user-specific and item-specific reviews revealing user preferences and item features. And for personalized explanations, we basically concatenate the user texture features and the item texture features generated by the encoder and then feed it to the decoder to generate the personalized reviews. We observe that if we optimize the sequence to sequence model via ma uh, maximum likelihood estimation, then the generated explanation will only contain general words rather than personalized content. Therefore, we adopt an adversarial training strategy. Basically speaking, we train a convolutional neural network for evaluating and assigning rewards to the reviews generated by the sequence-to-sequence -sequence learning model according to the level, of the level of personalization. This will encourage the sequence-to-sequence -sequence model to generate more personalized uh, explanations. So in order to facilitate the training of mod task learning, we introduced an iterative optimization methodology that alternates between the optimization of the sequence-to-sequence -sequence learning mod model and the matrix factorization. Briefly speaking, we first fix the latent factors learned by matrix factorization and then update the parameters of the sequence-to-sequence -sequence learning model. After that, we fix the parameters of the um, sequence to sequence model and then optimize matrix factorization. So we are going to evaluate both rating prediction accuracy and the uh, 
re recommendation explanation quality for in our work. And uh, here are the data sets we have used for evalu e evaluation. You can see that they range from a variety of types, ranging from business reviews to electronics and to groceries. And here are the baseline models we have used for evalu evaluation. These are generally accepted um, models in the literature to be state-of-the-art algorithms. And we evaluate the recommendation performance of different models in terms of mean square error. MT refers to our mod task learning model. Um, and you can see that it outperforms all the baseline models and across all the data sets. We also perform ablation study to study to, ev to validate the uh, effectiveness of different models. Here, MT minus encoder and uh, MT minus decoder refer to the mod task learning model with the encoder and the decoder removed from the sequence to sequence model. As we can see, um, the performance decreased when we remove each component from the model. This validates that the, the, effective, uh, the effectiveness of both the encoder and the decoder. And for evaluating explanation quality, we con conduct the e evaluation first in, in terms of perplexity. Perplexity is a commonly used um, metric in the NLP community for evaluating goodness of language models. Um, although it's not a perfect metric for evaluating explanation quality, for now it provides a useful starting point. Here, MTU, MTI, and MTP refer to the mod task learning model for generating user-specific, item-specific, and personalized explanations. We can see, again, that the mod task learning algorithm outperforms all the baseline model, uh, models by a wide margin and across all the data sets. Um, we can also ob observe that um, if we move from user-specific to item-specific and uh, to um, personalized explanations, the uh, results improve. This indicates that there's increased amount of information contained in users' items and um, personalization, user item pairs. And for we also uh, evaluate, evaluate um, as a second metric for explanation quality to use the TF-IDF similarity, which measures how relevant the generated review is to the ground truth. Again, you can see that our mod task learning approach outperforms all the um, baseline models and uh, across all the data sets. So a perceived weakness of this work is that instead of, instead of performing live user trial for evaluating explanation quality, we only evaluate in terms of perplexity and the TF-IDF similarity. So to further validate the performance of, of our model, we conduct a case study of the generated explanation. Here, our model recommends an ebook reader to the user and provides a, a possible review to serve as an explanation. Apparently, the predicted review has great overlap with the ground truth, and the model has discovered some important factors that um, were mentioned in the ground truth review. For example, the comfort, uh, the screen, and the overall positive sentiment. So in conclusion, we propose a mod task learning model that can simultaneously generate recommendation and explanation. The results we have found are very competitive and superior to state-of-the-art algorithms. There are some obvious future work of, uh, there are some obvious avenues of future work, uh, including online live user studies for eva evaluating explanation quality, moving beyond weighting prediction to ranking-based methods, and optimizing the diversity of the generated explanations. Uh, this concludes my presentation today. Thank you for your attention. Are there any questions? So I'll uh, take the first one. So there's always a challenge, as you say, if you don't do a live user study to know that your explanations are performing well, and you use perplexity as a measure. 
Uh, is there a reason why you chose perplexity, say, over rouge uh, as a metric? Oh, so we think that the rouge measure, which is um, like the common metric for in information retrieval, is partly covered by the second metric we used in, for evaluating explanation codes, that is TF-IDF similarity. And we observe that uh, TF-IDF similarity is more capable of uh, to evaluate the relevance of the generated review and the ground truth. So that's why we only, and for perplexity, it's a metric for uh, evaluating how confused the language model is. And uh, we, we believe that this indicates that our multitask learning method is less confused when generating personalized explanations. I have a question. Over here. Um, so it seems that your system basically generates the review that it thinks the user would give to an item. And I'm just trying to understand the connection between that review and an explanation, which would be, so for example, um, uh, part of the review was, you know, I liked it. But um, what I want out of an explanation is why I'm going to like it. Um, you know, um, and possibly even say reference to you know other things that the system knows that I like. I'm just wondering what the connection is between a generated review and an explanation. Um, so that's a good question. And so actually, so we, as we stated, um, generating reviews is can only be viewed in part as generating uh, explanations. But what we found that, as in a case study, um, there were some like opinions and uh, like as aspects and uh, opinions that influence user decisions and uh, like reviewing user preferences and product features can be observed from the reviews. And, uh, but um, due to the subjective nature of explanation, it's actually very hard to like get a ground truth um, explanation. So uh, Do you, do you we, think you would be able to say transform the review into an explanation? Is that kind of the next, the next step? Yeah, that might be a, a very good next step for like future work. For example, uh, in the reviews, it's always starting like what I think to be like. But when we, when the system in real life system, we want to um, make it like uh, you may like this because of um, which, 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 and which. So this is definitely a future step for to further explore. Yeah, thank you. Hi, uh, may I? Ask a question. So, uh, for your uh, review generation, in future, are you going to consider some sentiment analytics? Yeah. So we are, we we have think of uh, like we have think of a future step to like um, to um, to enforce the consistency between the um, sentiment polarity and the predicted rating. We hope that if we can just add a regular, re, like regularization to like if we use a sentiment analysis tool to generate a rating for the generated review. And uh, if it is more close to the predicted rating, then our model might be better for offering a recommendation and as well as an explanation. So for sentiment, do you have some idea to how to evaluate the quality of sentiment generation? Sorry, what do you mean? For example, you can generate some positive or negative comments, but uh, for generation, you should have some idea how to evaluate such kind of uh, generation for sentiment. Oh, so, so I, I believe that if you are talking about evaluating the, like to, to, to uh, judging the sentiment polarity, then state-of-the-art method in NLP can achieve very good results. Uh, detecting sentiment polarity. But if you're thinking, if you're talking about how to generate, for example, reviews um, for negative and positive sentiment, then some, there is some work um, in, by, by open AI that they detect uh, in the language modeling, there's a particular neuron that you can use to monitor the generated sentiment of the, the, the sentiment of the generated reviews. Is thank that you. Yeah, thank you. So let's thank the speaker again thank you very much. and welcome on.